in the previous lecture we discussed about molecular diagnosis how is molecular diagnosis different from serological testing right blood testing is called serological testing in serological testing identifying the disease in early stage is not possible then treating also is not that easy whereas when you go with molecular diagnosis like elisa blotting techniques pcr and radioimmunoassay we can identify the diseases in the early stages so then the detection and the treatment becomes faster right so in today's session we will talk about the next topic which comes in the chapter that is transgenic animals okay now what are transgenic animals let's try to understand first now uh, transfer of genes into animals is called transgenic animal means if new genes extra genes or foreign genes are introduced into the animal dna we are introducing them into the animal dna and we are expressing those foreign genes also then such animals are called transgenic animals hope you understood come on tell me what are transgenic animals ncrt says that animals in which their dna is manipulated yes you manipulated it because you introduced the foreign dna into the animal you introduced it you are expressing that foreign dna then those animals are called transgenic animals shall i write it on the board now animals in which their dna is manipulated manipulated means we are changing it okay so that dna is manipulated to introduce extra dna or foreign dna to introduce extra dna you can also call it as foreign dna we will manipulate it and we will introduce the foreign dna and express the foreign dna and we are also checking that and express the foreign dna such animals are called transgenic animals are called transgenic animals Amma, now did you understand what are transgenic animals? They are those animals in which we transfer the extra genes into them. Now, what are the examples of transgenic animals? Rabbits are there, rats are there, pigs are there, cow, sheep, fish. The examples what NCRT has given under transgenic animals are okay so what are the examples did ncrt says it tells rats are there transgenic rats are there transgenic rabbits are there transgenic pigs are there and transgenic cow is there transgenic sheep is there transgenic fish all these are examples of transgenic of course lion we can't convert into transgenic animal you can't cage it right so will it listen to you can you do any manipulations on it can you modify it can you uh, can you control it obviously not so that that's why lion and such carnivorous animals are not the transgenic animals what are transgenic animals which are easy to handle right like rabbit can be handled rat and mice can be handled pigs guinea pigs can be handled because pig dna and r dna it matches a lot so for human testing we can use pigs also and sheep cow fish all these are also the examples of transgenic animals even though there is possibility of producing these many types of transgenic animals but 95 percent of the transgenic animals are mice only even though there are so many examples next point we can tell 95 percent of the transgenic animals 95 percent of the transgenic animals are mice only 95 percent of transgenic animals are mice only why again why again so you will be searching for biology lectures now why do you search only uh, one particular tutor's classes because you are understanding so they are easy to understand 
they cover all the concepts of ncrt they are very much experienced in need training all those things in the same manner now why why mice is being used in 95 percent of the cases there should be some advantages shall i tell you the advantages now write down the advantages why mice acts as an why mice acts as a uh, majority of the case it's acts as a transgenic animal am i in mice the easter cycle that sexual cycle is very short it has a short easter cycle one advantage it has short pregnancy period gestation period second advantage <coughs> means in short span we can complete our experiment and the third thing is easy to handle right easily you can tame it you can manipulate it and uh, like one pregnancy can give many number of offsprings one pregnancy can give many number of offsprings and in vitro fertilizations if you want to introduce anything into the mice egg and all you have to remove the egg right so that's called in vitro fertilizations manipulations come can be done very easily in mice let us write on what are the advantages of the mice the first advantage i told they have short easter cycle sexual cycle is called easter cycle and they have short gestation period they have short gestation period or they have short pregnancy period right this is another advantage and the next advantage is uh, in one pregnancy many offsprings are released in one pregnancy many offsprings are released in one pregnancy many offsprings are released this is the other advantage and can be easily uh, maintained in the lab can be easily cultured you can easily culture them you can easily rear them in lab right so monkeys and all will they listen to us so no right so we can't so guinea pigs and all mice and all that's why rabbits and all they became our experimental animals because we can tame them and the other one is in vitro fertilization experiments on mice can be done very easily in vitro fertilization experiments on mice can b easily done so ncrt says that 95 percent of the transgenic animals are mice i have given the explanation also why mice becomes the experimental animal in majority of the cases take a screenshot we will continue right do you know like uh, what is that organization which have license to produce transgenic animals? You and me cannot do it, right? You and me can, cannot do it. We don't have that license to destroy the nature and introduce some new genes and destroy the wild genes. There is an institute in Hyderabad. It is NIN. There is an institute in Hyderabad which is called National Institute of Nutrition. It is National institute of nutrition where is it it is in hyderabad now this institute a government institute has a license for manufacturing these transgenic animals so it has license for uh, manufacturing these transgenic animals understood now why are the transgenic animals being manufactured what are the uses we should know no Shall we see? NCRT has given five points. What are the advantages of using transgenic animals? So, can I rub it? So, can we go with the uh, advantages of producing transgenic animals? Let it be a simple concept or let it be a difficult concept. If it is a simple concept, understand it easily and read it. But then, don't ignore it. Huh? So, uh, making a mistake from a simple concept also will cost us a lot okay thorough understanding is required for neat now why are the transgenic animals produced what are the advantages so 
the first advantage is if we have to list down the advantages we can tell transgenic animals are produced to understand the normal physiology and development so they are produced to they are produced to understand normal physiology and development transgenic animals are used are produced to understand normal physiology and development now what is this point let us under, try to understand it so transgenic animals are specially designed they are specially designed to study what are genes what are their products and how are these products controlling the growth and development of the body okay so what are we doing what do you mean by normal physiology all our physiological processes are controlled by our dna dna means it is gene so we can tell transgenic animals are specially designed they are specially designed to study what do you want to study to study how genes affect the normal functions how are the genes affecting the functions of the body how are the genes affecting the development of the body so we want to study how are genes affecting how are genes affecting the functionings of the body and how do they affect the development of the body also how do they affect the development of body also now gene it makes a protein that protein can help to increase the metabolism can help to increase our growth can help to increase our development that they are checking in experimental animals and if the genes we they also want to know how genes can be regulated also in transgenic animals they want to know how genes can be regulated now genes should be regulated if genes are not regulated it leads to cancerous condition now what are the regulatory sequences which are present on the gene we study it in molecular biology how do you came to know that when scientists worked on these experimental animals only they were able to tell the physiology they were able to tell the functions and developments of the system of the genes okay so transgenic animals will help us to study the effect of genes to study the role of the gene in body functioning to study how genes can be regulated and transgenic genes also help us to study the effect of complex factors what is the role of complex factor in growth for example liver will produce a factor called insulin like growth factor liver will produce a factor what is that factor called insulin like growth factor now we know growth hormone will influence our body it helps in the growth of the body that we know it is simple but there is some other complex factor called insulin like growth factor secreted by the liver also has a complex role in regulating the growth of the body how do you came to know what is its role what is its function through transgenic animals only okay so they help us to study the effect of complex factors like so i took an example for a complex factor what is that complex factor insulin like growth factor ncert says the same point so transgenic animals will help us to study the effect of complex factors like insulin like growth factors i am telling that this is secreted by the liver at that point secreted by the liver so transgenic animals will help us to study what is the role of this factor in 
growth and development in growth and development amma this is our first point what are the advantages of tran uh, transgenic animals transgenic animals will help us to study normal physiology and normal development and that so we have listed one two three points now second function what is the second role of transgenic animal means to study diseases to study diseases transgenic animals many transgenic animals are designed to increase our understanding of how genes contribute to diseases do you remember phenylketonuria in genetics chapter we study phenylketonuria is because of a deficiency of a gene which codes for an enzyme called phenylalanine hydroxylase right uh, like that so alkaptonuria is also a disease because of a deficiency of a gene which codes for an enzyme called homogenistase oxidase so how do you came to know all these things so we uh, the transgenic animals are designed to increase our understanding shall i write down so transgenic t means transgenic transgenic animals are designed how are they designed they are designed to increase our understanding they are designed to increase our understanding of genes of how genes contribute to develop a disease of how genes contribute how genes contribute to develop a disease how genes will contribute to develop a disease transgenic animals will help us now that means transgenic animals they are acting as models no they are acting as models for example if we want to buy a dress material so one model will wear that and they'll keep the picture of that so we can imagine okay if it comes stitched it look like this right in the same manner these transgenic animals serves as models for many human diseases so that means transgenic animals they serve as models for many human diseases they serve as models for many human diseases so that scientists can investigate the disease and scientists can find out new methods and new treatments right so transgenic animals serves as models for many human diseases such that their investigation their investigation and treatment becomes easy you know it becomes easy so when a model is available so you can test on it so your investigation becomes easy your treatment also becomes easy so now how many transgenic models are there for how many human diseases transgenic models are there so ncert says that transgenic models are available they are available for diseases against cancer we have a experimental animal for cystic fibrosis we have an experimental animal for rheumatoid arthritis we have an experimental animal for cancer for cystic uh, fibrosis for rheumatoid arthritis and alzheimer's disease for alzheimer's disease also experimental models are there children this point is very important they will ask you in neat examination so currently in the market for which diseases models are available for four diseases one with c cancer other one is also with c what is that cystic fibrosis other one is with a a is alzheimer's disease other one is with ra rheumatoid arthritis so for four diseases transgenic models are available there are five points under transgenic animals in ncrt two points we covered the first point is transgenic animals they help us to understand normal physiology normal development transgenic animals act as models to study the diseases 
to study the uh, to help to investigate it okay take a screenshot we will continue right now let's talk about the third advantage of transgenic animals then biological products is a third advantage what are biological products means manufactured in living organisms what is our second one to study diseases now what did i tell the third one biological products are biological products so uh, medicines which are used to treat certain diseases they contain some biological products but manufacturing this biological product is very expensive task if you are preparing a medicine in that medicine you are using a biological product but preparing this biological product is very expensive so then we are using animals to prepare to produce this biological products so that we are not building up a factory to produce the biological product instead you are using the natural organism itself your cost will cut down so that is biological products let me write down so medicines to treat diseases medicines to treat diseases contain they contain biological products but the production of biological products is expensive is expensive so then what scientists have done scientists are using transgenic animals to produce the biological products that's it so transgenic animals are used to produce biological products let us see some examples let us see some examples now there is a disorder called emphysema now to treat emphysema we need a protein called alpha 1 antitrypsin there is a disorder called emphysema to treat this disorder we use a medicine called alpha 1 anti trypsin a protein we use what is this children it is a protein now producing this normally outside as a very expensive task so we use transgenic animal to produce this protein for us so which we will collect it and we will use it in the treatment of emphysema so this is one advantage now another example if we have to take another example if we have to take means attempts are working on scientists are working attempts are being made attempts are being made to treat even other diseases not only emphysema scientists want to treat other diseases like phenylketonuria and cystic fibrosis scientists want to treat other diseases also what is this pku stands for phenyl keto nuria okay phenyl keto nuria phenyl keto nuria is because of deficiency of an enzyme what is that enzyme which is deficient phenyl alanin hydroxylase now the people who are suffering from phenyl ketonuria in them phenylalanine hydroxylase is not synthesized when this is not there then phenylalanine cannot be converted to tyrosine then further tyrosine cannot be converted to melanin no melanin is our body pigmentation no pigmentation 
Now, this is not converted to that, that is not converted to that. Then phenylalanine accumulates. When this accumulates, the two, where it will accumulate? Brain. What does it cause? Mental retardation. How dangerous it is. So, scientists are working out even to treat some dangerous diseases like phenylketonuria and cystic fibrosis cystic fibrosis is also an enzyme defect related to pancreas this is also a disease related to pancreas okay so we are talking about the third importance that's called biological products so in some medicines we use biological products if you want to manufacture that biological products by using an industry it's an expensive task so then we are using transgenic animals to manufacture those biological products examples are so, in some animal, we have produced a protein called alpha-1 antitrypsin, so which is used to treat emphysema. Now, scientists are still working out to treat some other diseases like PKU, phenylketonuria and cystic fibrosis. And then, they have produced a transgenic cow. They have produced a transgenic cow. The name of the transgenic cow is rosy. The name of the transgenic cow is rosy. Now, in this rosy, this rosy's milk, the cow milk contains human's albumin. Actually, after delivery, the mother has to feed the baby. The process is called lactation. But because of lifestyle and all, nowadays, the mothers are not able to feed their children. Now, either because of a genetic defect, they were not able to produce milk or because of other uh, work sessions and all those things they were not able to feed their children now then it is going with cow milk or it's going with bottled milk so when we are going with cow milk so cow milk is different from mother's milk no so then the baby might show some allergies so it is not human specific milk now scientists they thought like why can't we uh, make mother's proteins to express in cow so they did that so, they introduce the mother's genes which codes for human albumin. What is that called? Human lactalbumin. Lact means milk. So, they introduced a gene which codes for human lactalbumin into the cow. And the cow started producing milk. In that milk, mother's protein is there. Mother's protein is there. How much it is producing? 2.4 grams per day how much is producing it's producing not per day 2.4 grams per liter 2.4 grams per liter it is producing so let it be uh, less or more but then it will not show any allergy it will not show any allergy because this is far far balanced than the cow's albumin it's far far balanced than the cow's albumin Amma, all these are the beneficial effects related to biological products Take a screenshot, then we'll go to the fourth point. Right? So, we finished the third application all transgenic animals. Now, yeah, we can finish off four and five also. What is the fourth one? Vaccine safety. The fourth point comes is vaccine safety. The entire world is suffering because of a pandemic disease called Corona. So now there are so many biotechnological companies who came out and they have designed different different uh, vaccines. So one used a different source to prepare a vaccine. Another one used a different approach to prepare a vaccine. Another one used an, a novel approach to prepare a vaccine. Now they need to check their vaccines before releasing into the market right some protocol is there now you can't directly check on the humans now where do you check then where do you check its efficacy on animals which animals 
transgenic animals we check right so if you check it on uh, a, a dog which is walking on the road if you check on a sheep which is walking on the road it might have some defective genes already in them so it might not give you the accurate results or accurate antibody titers you need to check it in experimental animals whom uh, which is being reared by animal husbandry so vaccine safety for vaccine safety also we can use transgenic animals in majority of the cases mice is a transgenic animal for vaccine safety testing so for vaccine safety what animal we use transgenic mice after i completed my msc i worked in uh, hyderabad based biotechnological company shanta biotech so at that time long back it is at that time they were preparing the first recombinant indian recombinant biotechnological vaccine that is hepatitis b so the first they can ask us the first indian manufactured biotechnology vaccine the first indian manufactured by technology vaccine what it is it is against hepatitis b it's against hepatitis b and what is that the credit goes to which indian company it is by an indian company called shanta biotech since shanta biotech medchel it is it's, it's in a place called medchel in hyderabad since shanta biotech an indian based biotechnological company prepared this vaccine they named it as shanvac b they named the vaccine as shanvac b so before the shanta biotech has prepared that vaccine so people if they want to take the hepatitis b vaccination it is very expensive three doses they used to take each dose cost 3000 long back it was some 20 years back that much expensive it is because we are Uh, ex we are uh, taking it from other countries right so we are importing it from other countries so that is why it is very expensive but the first indian biotechnology company shanta biotech came out and they prepared the uh, vaccine which is called shanvac b so then we were under that team so we were checking the vaccine safety on mice so then we used to inject shanta biotech vaccine to the mice and we used to compare uh, this antibody titer with a world uh, vaccine which is called energix which is prepared uh, which is prepared by pfizer company pfizer company vaccines antibody titer and shanta biotech company antibody titer we used to check to compare and tell yeah an indian vaccine is also equally potent enough to this uh, pfizer's uh, energix vaccine so then if we see both are doing well both are working well by testing on animals then they will release it into market then it came into the market and this director he is so good to the society like he distributed it in all um, lines club societies and all for 50 rupees he made the vaccine available so indians are lucky enough to get a vaccine by technology vaccine by an indian company so let's not deviate we are talking about vaccine safety in vaccine safety we are telling transgenic mice are used as experimental materials to check the safety of the vaccines to check the safety of the vaccines now uh, transgenic mice was used to check the safety of polio vaccine in ncert they have given transgenic mice is used or it was used to check the safety to check the safety of polio vaccine this is what ncert says so we need to take this also into our mind so ncert says that so they use transgenic mice to check the safety of which vaccine polio vaccine only when you check the vaccine in transgenic animals then only we can tell like it is safe for human consumption only after testing on animals after testing in animals then only it is given to humans when it comes out well then only we can give to humans straight forward we cannot test on humans this is called clinical trials what is this concept called clinical trials you know clinical trials will be done in three stages the first stage they'll do it on animal tamed animal 
the second thing they'll do it on a wild animal and the third thing they'll do it on people also they'll do it in humans also so when it works all these three clinical trials so some vaccines or some medicines and therapeutics will be released after first trial itself some after second trial itself some after third trial itself they will release it now you know some people like uh, lame man or poor man so they'll hire them so they'll ask them so we want to send some genes into you to check whether whether the vaccine what we have prepared or whether the medicine what you have prepared is working or not so they'll take an agreement from that person and then they will uh, keep them and then they'll give the vaccine and they'll be checking the values and all this is called vaccine safety the last point what's the last point it is chemical safety testing chemical safety testing now if you are working in chemistry labs did you see on acid bottle skull picture will be there what do you mean by that skull picture it is toxic so it creates burns it creates injuries be away from that so there are certain warning signs on some chemical bottles and all how did scientists came to know that uh, it's th that much dangerous means they will first test it on the animals so uh, they can test on normal animals also why should they test on transgenic animals transgenic animals are prepared in such a manner that they are very sensitized and they respond very fast to small concentrations also so that means your experimental result will come very early your experimental result will come very early so in this manner also we can use transgenic animals for chemical safety testing what did i tell how can we use for chemical safety testing so to find out the toxicity to find out the toxicity we can check the toxicity in normal animals also but transgenic animals respond fast transgenic animals respond fast that means you'll get your results early that means your experiment you can do it fast now corona vaccine uh, like the whole world struggled and they prepared vaccine still it took one year to prepare vaccine now if the results are fast you can prepare the vaccine very early so that we can save the mankind from dreadful diseases and all those things so ma all these are applications of transgenic animals what are they so we can use them to understand normal physiology and development we can use them to study the diseases we can use them to manufacture biological products we can use for vaccine safety we can use for chemical safety testing hope the lecture is informative in the next lecture we'll talk about bioethics and patents if you like the content like share and subscribe to my channel thank you